Hello everyone, in this video we are going to, to talk about the uh, grayscale co-occurrence matrix. Um, so the, the idea here is that uh, we've seen before the, uh, the histogram and one of the limitations that we've seen from the histogram is that it only takes into account the, um, the distribution of the values of the image but it does not take into account the uh, spatial arrangement or the spatial distribution of those pixels. So that's a very useful information that's, uh, that uh, uh, we, we, we want to also be able to use, for instance, to, um, to determine uh, um, certain texture, the presence of a certain texture in the image, and we'll be using, using it in a later video um <coughs> for uh, segmentation, so uh, to, to, to segment an image based on the texture that is uh, present inside it. Um, so the basic idea of the uh, co-occurrence matrix is to uh, look at um, the, the values of pairs of pixels and uh, to, to, to try to see uh, if some uh, pairs of values uh, for uh, certain displacements are more uh, common or less common than uh, others. Okay? So in this lab, uh, what we are going to, 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 be, um, to be looking at is uh, how can we compute this uh, co-occurrence matrix and just what kind of very um, uh, basic information we can get from it uh, about the, the image and how can we compute uh, some useful statistics uh, about it. So in this notebook, I have um, my uh, usual uh, working the JPEG um, grayscale image that I uh, I'm loading in uh, in the im variable and here just uh, displaying. So that's uh, one that we've seen a few times before. Um, and now let's uh, take a look at the um, co-occurrence matrix. So there is a built-in method in scikit-image to compute it, but I just want to um, to compute it once uh, manually uh, because I think it's um, it really helps to to understand what's uh, what's going on with um, with the co-occurrence matrix. So the the, the definition of it uh, that I've uh, written here is that uh, we'll take for a certain uh, we compute the matrix for a certain displacement, and for every possible pair of um, of value that we that we can have, we'll count um, in the image the number of time that uh, that we uh, that we get this um, this pair of value for the displacement okay so this may uh, seem a bit um, a bit weird and uh, hard to understand at first but um, if we try to to, uh, to put that into into English um, if we look at a certain displacement for instance let's say five pixels in the x-axis 10 pixels in the uh, y-axis so that would mean going um, five pixels to the right and ten pixels uh, down. Um, if the um, the value in that uh, coherence matrix uh, for the um, pair of pixel values two hundred twenty is equal to n, it means that in the image there are n occurrences of a pixel with a value of two hundred and a pixel with a value of twenty such that their position is separated by the displacement 510. So it means that I found n time in the image, going through the image, where well, one pixel here is equal to 200, and the pixel 5 to the right, 10 down, is equal to 20. Okay, so how can I um, compute that? Well, first I'm going to be um, looping through every pixel in the image because that's what I have to uh, count. So we go first in the uh, Y axis, shape zero, then in the X axis. And for each um, pixel, I'm first going to look at the value in uh, X, Y. So it's always first the Y dimension in the NumPy array. So I'm going to be looking at image of Y, X. This is my i. My j is uh, im of y plus the delta x, uh, delta y, sorry, and x plus delta x. So that's something that I have to define first. So let's take here the uh, five and ten that I've already uh, that I've put in the definition here. So I'm going to be computing the co-occurrence matrix for the displacement uh, y equal uh, delta y is five and delta x is uh, ten. And I am going to uh, increment in the co-occurrence matrix at the position 
yj the um, the value of uh, that uh, that pair of of, uh, of values. So I'm going to increment uh, this position in the coherence matrix. So every time in the image that I find for this displacement a pair of value yj, I increment by one. And so at the end, I will count how many times in the image I have found this uh, pair of values. Um, so what do I have to um, initialize my uh, C um, matrix with? I will put uh, zeros everywhere first, since I need to uh, count afterward in it. And the, the size of this matrix will be 256 by 256. So this is the um, number of possible values, all the possible values that uh, a pixel can take since we are looking at 8-bit um, at, uh, 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 images. So every pixel can take value between 0 and 255. So I will have 256 by 256 possible pairs of values. Okay, so if I try to run uh, this code, I should get an error. Yes, so um, What's the problem? The problem is that I'm getting an out-of-bound error when I get to the close to the edge of the image. And uh, so the uh, position plus the displacement, if I get to the uh, edge of the image here and I try to look at the pixel, 5 pixel um, to, the, to the right, or 10 pixels to the right, um, I get outside of the image and uh, therefore outside of the uh, matrix. And this um, is really a, a very common type of, um, of problem that, uh, that we have in, uh, in image processing and uh, a choice that we always have to make in, in, in our algorithms, which is um, what do we do when we get close to the edge of an image? Because we always have this kind of issue uh, when we are looking at neighborhoods, or when we are looking at distances. Um, we, we, we very often have to uh, decide um, how do we handle the edge cases. and. Uh, the, the most basic thing that, that, that we can do and which kind of makes sense here would be just to say that we ignore any pixel that is close to the edge because it doesn't really mean anything uh, to look at uh, a pair of value uh, where one of the uh, item of the pair is outside of the image. So we can just stop when we uh, get close to the edge uh, to make sure that every pair of pixels that we look at is um, is contained uh, within the image. Some other common strategies that we could use, depending on the application, would be to say that we wrap around the um, the, the axis. So if we get to the e right edge, we look uh, starting from the from the left edge, um, or we could um, say that we reflect from the border. So basically, uh, we like if we rebounded on the on the edge um, here. So there are different um, possible strategies. Um, and we may um, look at, at others in, in different uh, applications later. But for now, we'll just uh, ignore uh, all that. And uh, here we uh, see that we don't no longer have an error. We still have to uh, display something. So one way to look, we could, of course, uh, just uh, print now this um, this co-occurrence matrix, but this is not the easiest to interpret in any way. Uh, um, Jupyter here will not, uh, the notebook will not uh, display all of the values, but since we are looking at the 256 by 256 uh, matrix, we can display it as an image using the imshow uh, method from matplotlib. And we can see here uh, that, uh, that we, we display an image, and um, since we, we have um, uh, values here that are um, uh, very, uh, it can be uh, fairly fairly large. There is a very wide uh, range of value. We we don't see uh, a lot of what's happening in the uh, in the lower um, in the lower ranges. Um, so there are two things that we can do to to have uh, kind of a better look at what's going on. The first is that we can play with the uh, color map. So there are many uh, different color maps that are available in Matplotlib to to display uh, those um, those kind of uh, of of matrices. Matrices. Uh, the default uh, that uh, is uh, being used here is uh, Viridis. So this may depend on your on your installations. For me, it's uh, Viridis, the the default color map. Uh, I'm going to be using the 
Jets color map, which I find a lot, uh, a lot easier to, to, to interpret. Um, for, for this one, so I personally at least I see I see a bit better the, the contrast uh, with, with it. Um, so what can we uh, tell from from this uh, image? Um, well, we can see that most of the values, not all of them, but most of the values are concentrated uh, around the diagonal. And so um, what does that mean? Um, a value that is on the diagonal means that for this uh, for this pair of uh, for for for, for, for um, the, the the displacement uh, that we are that we are looking at, uh, any value on the diagonal is uh, the count of pixels where the the, the, the the values of the pixels are the same. Uh, okay, for the, for this, the displacement. So intuitively, if we look at a displacement of zero, so where we only where the pair of pixels is the pixel and itself every uh, value will be exactly on the diagonal because of course uh, pixel will always have an equal value to, to itself so this is the kind of the uh, uh, trivial uh, uh, case where we um, where we have everything on the, the, the diagonal and what's interesting here is that uh, what we are going to find on this diagonal is actually the uh, histogram of the um, of the uh, of the image because here Every, uh, the only thing that we are actually looking at is how many times a certain uh, value appear in the image. So that's uh, the, the, the histogram. If we just take diagonal here and plot it, we'll get the, um, the histogram of the image. Um, and as soon as we start uh, increasing the, uh, the displacement, we'll start to see this uh, diagonal um, getting spread out uh, a little. And if we take a uh, much larger uh, value, we should uh, see something that is a lot more, uh, more, more, more spread out. Um, another thing that we can do to, um, to still uh, improve um, the visualization is rather than look at um, just uh, C here, we could try to look at the uh, log. Uh, so that we uh, kind of increase the contrast for the uh, for the lower uh, values. Uh, if we just use log like that, uh, we will increase the contrast, which will also be very ugly because of all the uh, uh, zero values. So there are many um, uh, values in this uh, in this matrix uh, that are equal to zero, and so log of zero is uh, not. Uh, something that uh, Matplotlib likes to uh, display. Um, so it just puts, uh, puts it at uh, white and uh, doesn't put any value uh, in there. Um, so what we could uh, quickly do is define our log uh, just for the non-zero value uh, of a matrix. And what we can do is say that um, everywhere where we had uh, zeros in the in the matrix, we put a value of 0 0.5, and then we return the log of that. And we can do that because we, we know that uh, in um, uh, in our coherence matrix, um, it's uh, it will be all integers. We incremented by uh, by one, so we know that the lowest the lowest non-zero uh, value in the matrix is one. So if we take uh, 0 0.5 here, we will have something that is still lower than every um, possible um, possible value, without being so low that when we take the logarithm, we actually bias the uh, the, the display in the other direction. So that's kind of uh, the the reasoning there for choosing 0 0.5, um, and we and then we can still that we also differentiate it. Uh, with the, the the places where the value is equal to one, um, and if we use that method now to display, this will be uh, a lot uh, better. Um, so now I can really see uh, all of the um, uh, places uh, where we have non-zero value in the um, in the matrix, um, and we can see that there are some patterns emerging which are also related in part to the to the to the histogram. So since we have a peak. A, a very large peak in the in the histogram here. There are many pixels with a value uh, of around uh, what is it uh, uh, one one eighty something like that. Um, and so, of course, there will be many pairs of value where at least one of uh, of the pixels is 
is uh, along that value. Uh, but what's uh, more interesting is to see where we have um, a kind of peaks outside of the diagonal, because those peaks outside of the diagonal uh, means that there are um, pairs of values that um, that appear fairly often for 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 that uh, displacement, and that's an indication of uh, a border with a pair of values. So, for instance, here we we have uh, we'll have many um, probably many pixels where the f the first one is at a value of uh, very close to zero, and the other is at a value of close to 180. Um, so that will be uh, this peak around here, uh, meaning that so we are looking at the pairs where one pixel is in the um, uh, in the window and the other is on the wall. Um, so that's uh, where it becomes very interesting because in that way we can uh, start to, to, to see potentially uh, for certain uh, displacement uh, some patterns uh, appearing in the um, in the co-occurrence matrix. Because if we uh, find a displacement that corresponds to a reoccurring pattern in the image, uh, this will make very sharp peaks appear in the uh, co-occurrence matrix that we uh, can uh, use to characterize the, uh, the texture of the, of the image. So when we don't want to compute everything by hand, but uh, want to use the tools uh, from Second Image, we can use the uh, Greco matrix method from uh, the feature uh, module. So we have the uh, documentation here in the Second Image uh, website. Um, and here, instead of uh, taking the uh, delta x, delta y uh, for the, uh, for the uh, displacement vector, we uh, give a vector of distances that we want to check and a vector of angles that we want to check. And then the, um, the method here will compute all of the uh, different pairs of distance and angle and uh, return the uh, compute and return the, the gray scale coherence matrix for all of those um, uh, all of those uh, pairs. So here, if we look, for instance, at distance of 5 and distance of uh, 50 pixels, and the angles 0 and 90 degrees, uh, put in uh, radians, um, this will compute four different uh, uh, co-occurrence uh, matrix so for all for the pair 5, 0, 5, uh, pi over 2, 50, 0, 50, pi over 2. Um, and then I can uh, display uh, here on this uh, on these plots, uh, the um, the four uh, different coherence matrix. So I see the same thing. Where if I increase the distance, I spread uh, the the value. So I could also uh, take the uh, log here, so that uh, it's easier to see. Um, so for small distances, I have uh, mostly uh, everything uh, close to the diagonal with just uh, a bit of dispersion uh, here. Um, I can see that for different uh, angles, so this is the same uh, distance but a different angle, I have actually different patterns appearing. So this is probably, uh, in this case, due to the uh, horizontal lines uh, that, that appear here. So if I look at the displacement uh, on the um, vertical axis, I will have this uh, repeating pattern that appear a lot more often than if I look at the uh, displacement along the uh, horizontal axis. So this is um, what, I, what I can see uh, here. Uh, and if I increase the displacement, uh, I will have everything that is a lot more uh, spread out. Um, so um, one other thing that we can do, uh, here I already put the code, I will ju just briefly uh, explain it, is that we can comp use the, the method uh, called uh, Greco props here, uh, also from scikit image, to uh, compute uh, some statistics uh, that basically sum up the information contained in the co-occurrence matrix. So uh, the, uh, what they call here contrast, dissimilarity, homogeneity. Basically, those are all uh, ways to uh, measure the, um, the, the the dispersion of the values in the co-occurrence um, uh, matrix. So for the, uh, for instance, the contrast, we we'll see that uh, a high contrast, we'll have a high contrast if we have uh, values, uh, pairs of pixels where the values is, um, is very uh, different. So basically, uh, high values uh, in, the, uh, cor in those corners of the, uh, of the image, so further from the diagonal. Uh, any any non-zero uh, value in the co-occurrence matrix uh, further from the diagonal will contribute a lot to the uh, overall uh, contrast um, and the homogeneity will be kind of the, the reverse so uh, it will see say uh, um, uh, it will be uh, lower if we if we have um, 
uh, value that are uh, um, very uh, um, for this list. Sorry, um, is first. Um, so this is a way of summing up uh, this information just to. Uh, kind of get basic texture descriptor. And so what we can do, for instance, here, I'm taking uh, two, um, the four patches uh, inside the image, uh, two around the, um, these uh, parts of the, of the windows with the, um, the structure, uh, the metallic structure here, uh, the balcony, and then two just taken uh, on, the, on the wall. I can compute for each of those uh, patches uh, the um, grayscale um, coherence matrix. Yeah, I just I've just taken one uh, displacement of 10 pixel and uh, an angle of uh, zero, um, and I can um, compute then here I compute the dissimilarity and the energy for those um, for those uh, patches, and finally I plot. Um, the uh, just on a, on a simple graph, uh, scat scatter plot of uh, those uh, those values, so dissimilarity and energy for the four patches. And what I can see um, immediately is that I have uh, so those of of course very similar. Um, so I've taken uh, both windows here and then uh, two patches uh, over here. And of course the very similar patches have fairly uh, similar uh, values for both statistics. And in this way, we have an easy characterization of the uh, texture that's present in those parts of the images. We could fairly easily um, find a rule to, um, to categorize, uh, to classify those patches uh, on whether they are closer to the balcon uh, a balcony texture or closer to a wall texture. And so that's uh, kind of give a hint as to how we'll use these informations uh, later to, to for segmentation.